Okay, so welcome to Retech, and as you can see, it's an Amiga day. And basically, we're going to do this in two parts. It's a two part video, all in one tidy little package that you're going to watch now. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade the speed of this machine, and then we're going to upgrade the look of this machine, as in try and get it as close to normal. The um, the machine's colors and the way it looks and feels. Now, as you can see, a lot's been done to this, and which is what we're going to cover today. Um, and as you can see that the keyboard is the one thing I really need to do. But today we're going to cover upgrading the machine in terms of performance, uh, processing power, and also we're going to cover how I got this machine to look like this. So there's still a little bit to go, as I will explain in the video, and also a bit to go on the keyboard, but as you can see, it makes a huge difference. So I hope you enjoy this, and let's get into this two-parter on the Amiga. So let's take a look. Right, so we have a standard Amiga 500 board. You can see the processor there, the 68000, and it's just a standard board. There's nothing untoward about it. There's nothing been added or kind of messed with, and it works really well. It's quite an early iteration of the board, as you can see, um, but it still needs a little bit of work. But the whole point of today is, is to try and see if we can beef this machine up and what effect it's going to have once we do that. Will it run software better? Will it be a better machine all round? Or is it just a complete and utter waste of money? So we're going to not touch the board. What we're going to do is we're going to start to install an upgrade. And what we'll do is we'll then find out whether or not it's, it's going to work. It's going to be any better or maybe if it's going to be any worse. So first we're going to replace this processor. Now, this is the kit. This is a 15 megahertz upgrade for the Amiga 500. And it's basically a plug-in design. Now, I've put a, a second riser on here simply because it doesn't quite clear the chips next to it. So all you do is you just get a, a second socket and plug it in over the top of the original on the board. And Basically, it's meant to speed up the machine to about 14 megahertz to 15, depending on which way you look at it. So, once you remove the original 68,000, all you need to do then is make sure the socket's ready to take the new board. And, you know, this machine does need some work, but it does work. So, we're just going to upgrade the machine now by taking away this old processor and storing it away somewhere safe because it will be reused and we're just going to pop the board into the socket lining up all the pins as we go it's as easy as that remember the pin one marker is the little notch so we're just going to gently press home the board and it does take a lot of pressure to make it seat correctly but just take your time on this and make sure the pins are all lined up and then once you're ready, you just need to press the board down. Right, okay, so we've got this um, Amiga kind of working and um, it's, you know, it's had the upgrade. It's got a faster processor in it. And um, basically it's not very nice looking. It's also got the GoTech drive in there all up and running. But as you can see, it's faded really badly all along the case. And that's roughly the original color of the machine. now. It's too brittle and too far gone to retro bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if we can resolve this by using color matching again. It's very quick. It works. It works on the STs, and um, I haven't really had to retro bright any of my Atari STs apart from the old key and keyboard. But um, the cases usually come up quite nice. So. Let's see if we can get this sorted out. Okay, so let's get this thing and take it apart. And there's only um, the usual amount of case screws in here, so it shouldn't take too long. Okay. 
and now all you need to do is just gently remove the board it's quite simple you move it as one tray now the next thing we're going to have to do is to make sure that the base is prepared and it's ready for painting so we turn it over we see that is very different color on the bottom and the inside to what the top of the machine is and we're going to use this cream paint by painter's touch it's fairly close to the original color um, although the paint will darken down on the case because you're only going to use very light coats and as you can see it's not that far away from the original color at all so it will actually make this Amiga look really really good so all we need to do is to get the machine ready for painting but always put a plasticizer down first before you do any painting on plastics so we're going to go ahead and do a test piece and we're just going to spray a light coat on this tray itself we're basically just doing the edges and as you can see it's quite a decent match to the original paint finish and you just go lightly around the edges don't put it on heavy because you want to darken the paint down ever so slightly so once you've put a few coats on very light coats you can then let it dry now turning our attention to the top of the case first we just mask off the badge the badge needs to be masked off with a small amount of masking tape just to make sure that it doesn't get covered in paint and it'll take you a minute or so just to mask it off very very carefully and then we follow this up with some very light coats of the painter's touch cream paint just to try and get some of the color back on the case and again you want some of the original color to come through because that will darken down the paint somewhat and basically match it in the way it should be matched on the original machine so just take your time it takes a few moments just to cover the machine completely but just take it nice and easy you don't want to overdo it because it will take a lot longer to dry and you don't want to put it down too thick that the paint really becomes inflexible with the plastic so again just nice light coats you're looking for less than a millimeter in thickness of paint on the machine itself and then once you're happy with the finish you're just going to then allow it to dry off normally and now with it being a plastic based paint it will take a lot longer than a normal kind of aerosol so really you'd need to put the machine aside for at least 24 hours to make sure it hardens off correctly and it's just a case of just taking your time getting every little part of the case covered and then make sure that you're happy with the final finish and as you can see from this you can actually see that it's a reasonably close match to the original but we're going to give the coating on this part just a light dusting so everything completely matches up although it is very very close as you can see from here but this part does have a little bit of fading as well so we're just going to make it match 100% with the newly kind of coloured case so again it doesn't really need to be done because I'm not really going to be using it with the modulator um, but it'd be nice to have something matched up fairly fairly close and as you can see they're pretty close to the original color judging by the inside of the modulator case and um, we're just going to let them sit and dry okay so I'm just dropping the board back in the case which is nicely painted and actually as you can see the edges match the inside of the case so that's pretty good making sure the new process is reseated again and also this make sure it's all still bonded into place uh, simply because it wasn't particularly bonded very well when I got it the screen wasn't bonded and just making sure it's all working so 
it's just a case now of putting it back together and then testing it out okay and just to show how close a match it is this is the side and this is the bottom and as I roll it over it's quite close bottom side and as you can see I haven't painted the bottom I just left it as is just need to clean the feet up where it stuck to the, to the actual paper where it was painted on but not a problem and there's a few little tiny bits I just need to clean up here but other than that it's um come out really 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 well okay so as you can see by this it's um running a lot quicker than a standard amiga amiga 500 it's kind of running at 14.20 megahertz but in reality it doesn't it doesn't run as fast as you would expect it to run because a lot of the graphics and the games and the programming was centered around the custom chipset so you had custom sound custom graphics etc which kind of limits what an accelerator will do for this machine it's good it's kind of worthwhile because it does increase the performance of the machine um, but it's not ever going to be a out and out blistering performance change by doubling the processor clock speed so is it worth it well if you predominantly want to run old demos, um, the Amiga demos from back in the kind of day when this machine was out, if you want to run the Amiga games and the Amiga software and you really want to be able to get the full kind of authentic experience, you have to remember that the software was written for this machine. It was written for the processor speed. It was written for the extra chipsets and it was written to take advantage of that. So really, you're not going to see a huge increase in performance unless you're doing calculations, maybe ray tracing and so on. But as a general rule of thumb, you're probably going to see about a 20% difference. So to that end, I'm going to run one of my favorite demos. And it's just to give you an idea of how much smoother it is. It is actually smoother. And when you run them back to back, there is probably a 20% smoothness difference in the way the machines work and the way the graphics are displayed and so on. And it does make a difference. It visually makes a difference. And to that end, it's well worth kind of doing it to your own machine. If you want games to speed up, then it's possibly not going to do every game. It's going to do some, it's going to make some smoother, but it's not going to be a massive increase. I don't think any of the big accelerators for this machine are going to make a huge difference to gameplay um, or to demos written specifically for this machine. But it will make a difference if you're doing graphics and using paint packages and so on and uh, that's where it will come into its own so we're going to lead out with this um enigma so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this i hope you enjoy you know a different way of restoring a very rough case and as you can see it does make a difference although i do need to do the keyboard so please subscribe and i'll see you soon thank you